Did you kill your husband? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Why should people believe you? February 3, 2008, Super Bowl Sunday. Larry Fenton, like many others, cherished that day each year. He intended to spend the entire day watching sports, in particular Tiger Woods play golf, before taking a sleep, ordering pizza at 6 p.m., and settling down to watch the Super Bowl at his house in Clearwater, Florida, United States. The residence was occupied by Larry and his wife of three years, Rebecca Fenton. After a three-month affair, they were engaged and married within a year after meeting at a gym. They appeared content and deeply in love while maintaining their privacy. Rebecca stated that Larry became less sociable following their marriage. Her life altered drastically as well. Prior to her marriage, she worked as a nursing assistant and liked traveling and experiencing other locations. When she married Larry, she quit her work to become a stay-at-home wife. Larry was a millionaire, he acquired his fortune by selling medical equipment, and Rebecca no longer needed to work thanks to his wealth. That day, February 3rd, Rebecca stated she went to the gym. It was a home gym housed in a separate structure on their property. Rebecca stated she was there for around two hours. She heard what she believed to be something falling over the roof while at the gym. She resumed her workout, hearing little else due to the music she was listening to. After completing her workout, Rebecca returned to the main residence. Rebecca observed Larry on the ground upon entering the residence. He was lying in a pool of blood at the foot of the stairs in the entryway. Rebecca saw that there had been a disturbance in the home. The cabinets and drawers were bare, and there was debris everywhere. Rebecca claims that she took Larry's pulse. She believed he was still alive since his eyes were open. When Rebecca walked upstairs, she found the same situation as downstairs. All of their possessions were scattered across the floor. Rebecca returned downstairs and rechecked Larry's pulse. She then exited the building and dialed 911. The cops discovered Larry at the bottom of the stairs when they arrived. He had died. He had been shot in the back arm, and neck at point-blank range. Initially, police suspected a robbery. In this manner, the crime scene appeared. The jeep of Larry was vanished from the driveway. When they dug further, however, they were puzzled as to why nothing more of worth was gone. Cash in Larry's wallet was still present. Rebecca informed police that she was in their home gym at the time of the incident and arrived home between 4.30 and 5 p.m. Rebecca's claim that she took Larry's pulse twice made no sense to them. And was there any pulse either time? I, no, but I didn't know if I was doing it right. Did you he, check he, him for any injuries? I looked into his eyes and I kept saying this to me. I touched his head. He kept saying this How much blood was around him? It seemed to me like a lot. It what? seemed like it was around his body. There was absolutely no blood on her and the blood around Larry's body had not been disturbed. It appeared as though he was still in the posture he was in when he collapsed. He had not been relocated. Rebecca's behavior and demeanor were also troubling for a variety of additional reasons. I had known that I was supposed to be with him, hold him, or do CPR than I would have. I think that I'm trying to think of what I was thinking. I didn't think it was wise for me to touch him to get blood on me, to turn him over, to do anything like that. I, just, I thought that would just either make things worse for the scene, it might have incriminated me. Rebecca made 911 call after some delays. I think my husband's been shot, my house has been burglarized, I just walked in, I don't, and I've been a pulse on him, I just came in from the gym. We have a gym out back and I was working out in the gym. They were initially concerned about the delay in phoning 911. Rebecca surveyed the home before to making the call. The absence of blood on Rebecca was also concerning, but what prompted the most concern was the fact that she was laughing and joking with the police outside her home. How do you explain that? I can't. I have no explanation for were that. Were you happy at that moment? No, I wasn't happy. But, setting aside instincts and suspicions, there was no evidence at the time that she was participating in a way that would warrant an arrest. There was no murder weapon in the residence and no gun residue was discovered on Rebecca. Later, police discovered the murder weapon just outside the residence. In actuality, it was in Rebecca's parked car in the driveway. They discovered Larry's rifle behind the passenger seat, wrapped in a plastic bag. 
Before the murder, Larry's pistol was stored in a drawer in the residence. This firearm was used to murder Larry. It included five empty casings and one chamber. The ammo box in their bedroom was missing five rounds. They were identical to the bullets that murdered Larry. In addition, they discovered Larry's jewelry, a key to his pistol bag, and his jeep's keys. On the gun, no fingerprints were recovered. Two days after the murder of Larry, investigators discovered his Jeep Cherokee. It was only one block away from the residence. The discovery of Larry's laptop in the Jeep increased their suspicions that he was not slain during a heist. Therefore, since there was no theft, why was Larry murdered? Had he any adversaries? The cops posed this inquiry to Rebecca. Was there anybody who loathed Larry sufficiently to wish for his death? She stated there was none. Even though it was extremely likely that Rebecca murdered Larry, police concluded they lacked sufficient evidence to assure a conviction. The evidence was entirely circumstantial. Unidentified fingerprints and footprints were discovered at the crime site, prompting investigators to speculate if a third party was involved. During the course of the inquiry, the police examined several leads as well as Larry and Rebecca's marriage. The police discovered that Rebecca's marriage was not as flawless as she claimed. She was dissatisfied with her marriage and had developed feelings for David. He was a neighborhood restaurant's chef. They had a secret meeting location in a hotel, but neither of them admitted to having an intimate relationship, although Rebecca did admit to finding him attractive. Rebecca was revealed to have worked as a high-priced call girl by the police. She said that Larry was aware that she had worked as an escort before to their marriage. Investigators believed that money may have been the motive. There was a life insurance policy that would pay Rebecca $500,000 if Larry passed away. Due to the prenuptial agreement she signed, she would not receive as much if they divorced. But despite the circumstantial evidence and apparent motive, the police decided they required further information. They desired a confession or a statement from a witness. The case became closed. A few years later, Larry and Rebecca's home was destroyed by fire. Investigators of arson discovered evidence of fire accelerants. This pushed Larry's murder back into the limelight, and a cold case squad reopened its investigation. Uh, two years ago, uh, I started investigating an unresolved case My in Clearwater, and it's your husband. So I just want you to listen, okay? Okay. Okay. I have a question. I want you to listen. This. This was found in my this car. This bag is right there. This is Larry's watch. This is the bracelet. This is a handgun, a revolver. This is a little key to a soft-sided gun case. And these are the keys to the Jeep. You're not being honest with me. I'm absolutely being honest. The first thing I said to you was that I'm going to be open and honest okay. with you, and I just want you to listen. I know this is a lot. I know that I've had two years, and I know you've had now ten minutes. Okay. Everything I am telling you... I, I have no, just listen, I have no benefit to lie. I agree. None. I agree. Everything I'm telling you is the absolute truth. These are the contents of the bag. I, I know this, that this, mine and well, Mary's well, relationship can be legitimized by talking to people that he had talked to days before, that we had encountered within days before. He just had... A performance is all done. He had talked with Terry, talked about how happy okay. he was, so there's a way to legitimize it. Okay. But nobody knows what goes on into a private home. Larry and I do not have problems. Okay. And we did, we're not having a bad day. Out of all, now, as much as I don't understand any of this, especially this, I don't understand this. Don't comment. I just, I'm just downloading this Trust case file. Trust me, the community file. destroyed me over that. I understand. I just, I'm showing you, okay? As in, I wasn't there in 2008, 2009, 2010, 2011. I didn't pick these books up until 2012. I want to talk to you, but at this point now, I'm starting to feel like you guys are, like I'm being accused of this again and I do want my attorney present, that's all. But I am saying this, willing to cooperate. I do want to talk to you because if the two wouldn't talk to us, they wouldn't give me the information. Like, when we asked them any questions about Larry, we were going to come in, but they wouldn't. 
So I'm grateful you've taken the investigation. I just want Dale sitting there as protection because I haven't been treated good through this whole thing. I had to answer anything that I can. Okay. And I do want to work with this. Okay. I'm also having a tough time physically. I haven't seen these pictures in a long time. I'm having a hard time remembering a couple of things, and I'm just... Rebecca, you're under arrest for the murder of Larry Fenton. Alfred Nolan, who was in a relationship with Rebecca, submitted the witness statement that had been requested. He told authorities that during their argument, she placed a knife to his throat and threatened, I'll kill you. I'll kill you like I killed Larry. Rebecca denied making such a statement. She stated that Aford was seeking a plea bargain after she reported him to police for domestic abuse. Rebecca was charged with first-degree murder six years after the death of Larry. Rebecca was found guilty of first-degree murder after the jury deliberated for two hours, and she was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release. Rebecca maintains she is innocent.